Okay, we're ready to talk about the uh, start the end of uh, the last week of chapter three, and we're going to cover list and specifically linked list in this part. Uh, understanding linked list is important because we're going to do uh, linked structures uh, for many other structures in later chapters, such as trees and uh, graphs. So links are important to uh, understand and work with. Uh, there will be an assignment for this. Uh, it's a fairly hard assignment, so you should start it as soon as you've reviewed the material. So uh, Python has a pretty good list. Uh, it has an underlying list that they've implemented for us, and it's very powerful. Uh, it it, it uh, is powerful for all the most common operations you'd want to do. Um, but we're going to look at how would you implement your own list. So in general, we're going to be implementing an unordered, basically, which means it's unsorted list. Uh, so the qualities of an unordered list, it's a collection of items. And uh, like all the linear structures, each item holds a relative position relative to the other items. Uh, the list has a first item, a second item, and so on. And you can refer to the first and the last item of a list. Uh, potential operations you, you would have on a list would be uh, creating a new list, of course. Uh, add an item where you pass a piece of data or a reference to an object and it adds it to the list. Uh, remove an item where you pass it uh, a reference to an object you want to remove. Uh, you can also have a remove that takes an index number, so we're looking at all the possible operations you could do. You could search for a piece of uh, data, so you give it an object that has some data and it finds the same object and data on the list. You can check if the list is empty. Uh, you can get the length of the list, how many items are on the list. You can uh, append an item to the end of the list, which is uh, to the far right, looking at it from left to right. You can get an item by index. Oh, actually, this is to search for an item. So this searches for item and returns its index. So it's like search, where this returns true or false. This one returns the location on the list. Uh, there's pop, which will remove something from the last item. So that's the opposite of append. That adds to the last, and this would pop it. So just using append and pop, you would have a stack. Uh, there's pop from a certain position. So this is an integer position of what element you want to remove. Uh, you can do a set where you give it a position, and this actually should be a, a item that you want to uh, change. So this would look up the element at this position and change it to this item. So it's basically assigning to a position in the list. And then get would return uh, the item that is at this position. Now let's back up and look a little bit about uh, talking about pointers. So when we have a variable in Python or almost any language that points to an object, it's actually a name and it basically points to a place in real memory. So I have a little diagram here of real memory. Um, we have memory addresses and I've made these memory addresses uh, in normal computers. The memory address is by byte boundary. So if you had four bytes per int, for example, each of these boxes would represent one int. So if I pointed to this location 104, I could store one integer in that box. And that's kind of what memory looks like. Uh, so if I have a variable count equals 203, and I do that statement in Python, uh, first it, it allocates a name inside Python called count, and then it, it assigns, finds a place in memory that's free, and then it's going to store this location in that memory. So after we've done that, uh, the now count will be, the name will have a, an actual address number associated with it, and that address number we call an object reference because it points to where that object really is in memory. And so this would point to that integer in memory. So this is the same with arrays, and uh, it's very similar to list in Python, that whenever you assign a variable, you're actually going to point to somewhere in real memory. So we can always think of a variable name and then have this pointer that points to memory. Now we don't really need to know these numbers. 
Uh, they're interesting if you get down to the machine level and you're debugging at the machine level. Uh, but for most programming, you just you just need to know that points to a place in memory. In most languages, you can get a number called a reference or a hash or a ID. It's called an ID in Python, and it gives you a unique number that which represents the actual memory location. So that's the abstract point of view. We just think of count pointing to a piece of data in memory. So here's a class. So we're going to show you how a class looks like in memory. Uh, so when you have a more complex data that's got more than one element, you basically create a class and you create objects of that class. So here's a point class. So I have class point. I have something to initialize two instance variables to x and y. And so uh, when I say p1 equals point and give it two numbers, it creates a memory. It, it initializes it to those two numbers. So this first slot would be the self.x slot. Well, self actually refers to the whole thing. And the self.x would reference just the first slot. And self.y would reference the second slot. And then p1, which is now assigned to refer to that object, basically points to where the object is in memory. So we can also think of, uh, especially since objects are used everywhere in Python, every variable we have will point to uh, an object of a type in memory, and it will have a certain number of memory locations allocated toward it. Now let's look at an uh, interesting structure. Uh, we're going to look at what something looks like in memory. So let's consider this structure. Now what this is, I build a list here on the inner. So there's, this is actually a tuple. This is actually a list. The first element is C, and the second element is none. So you notice there's a pair. And then this list is the second element of this other list, which starts with B and then this list. And then this third list starts with A, and it has to the right this inner structure. So uh, each one of these things is an ab object, uh, but the list are more complex objects. So let's look at what it looks like. So I'm just going to copy this expression. And I'm going to go to the Python and, uh, visualizer. And I already have it open. And I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm going to visualize it. And then we're going to step forward. And we'll see we have something very interesting. Uh, this is what's called a linked list structure. And what you'll see is A points to the first list item. Each list item uh, is this thing is called a node. And so you have a piece of data. And then you have a pointer to another node, which has a piece of data, and a pointer to another node, which has a piece of data. And lastly, it doesn't have any more, so it has none. So this is actually how you store a list item. So I just wanted to show you how simple a structure it is. You can write it on one line. Now we're going to work with uh, a structure like this, but we want to be able to insert into it and take things out of it and add things to either end. Um, so we're going to make a class out of it. So it's going to be more complex than just trying to do it in one line. But this is the basic idea. This is about as simple as you could write a what's called a linked list. It's called links because your first variable just points to the front of it here, or it's usually called the head. And then as you add items, you add them to the head and you push them down uh, like this. And if you want to see what's in the list, you have to follow the link. So you follow a link to this pair, and then you follow the, the second uh, piece of data to this pair, and so on. So you follow these links, which are usually called next. Uh, or in, in the, the linked list structure. And then when you finally get to a link that's not set to anything, it's set to none, you know you've reached the end of the list. So here's that structure. Uh, let's look at something, a simple class that would store uh, these nodes, which are the individual pieces of data and links. So here's a class called node. Here's an initializer that takes a piece of data we want to store. And it's, it creates a brand new node and sets the data to point to that data. And it sets uh, a link called next to point to none initially. And so we can create a, a blank node and store that in first. 
and uh, then we can say first dot next that's going to go into that first object and look at the next value and it's going to point that to another node and the data for that's going to be B and then lastly we're going to take first which uh, we're going to take next which is going to point to the first node and in that node we're going to go next which will be the link from the, the, the second node B and we're going to set that to C so we're going to look at what this looks like in the initializer and you're going to see it looks just like our previous example uh, so I'm going to go edit I'm going to replace this code with our new code and then I'm going to step through it uh, let's see visualize it and go forward now one thing about the visualizer it, it does everything so it's going to step into every time we create a new node so we're going to follow it into this new node but you'll see right away there's just uh, it's created a node and it and it has just one attribute which is the method available and we're going to go forward okay and now it's uh, assigned an object which is known as self and so the self points to just an empty instance right now and then we're going to assign data so you can see now it's changed from an empty object to self pointing to a uh, instance variable that has the data A and then we go forward and it's about to return so now self points to the full object instance which has the data and the next pointing to nothing and then we go forward it's going to go back to here and we're going to make node B so I'm just going to step through that until it returns and after that's returned you notice that first uh, here now points to this node but next has now been set to point to this new B node and then we'll step through till this is done and you'll see we have the same structure we have first a variable on uh, the outside points to the first node of this list uh, the next node's next value points to the next node in the list and that value points to the next and so we have a linked list now why this is important is because this is basically uh, a very efficient way to build a list in memory uh, it's very flexible you can insert things in the middle we're going to see uh, you can delete things from the middle uh, you can add to either end uh, and so we're going to examine this whole structure because this is a very important structure in computer science